on to criticality. Uh, you want to build a reliable system, and one that one important aspect of that is finding the weak links and reinforcing them, or finding a way to uh, make the system more redundant. We call uh, this feature in Watercut and Water Gems that helps you do that this criticality. And another aspect of understanding system reliability is identifying the active pressure zones within a system and confirming their correct representation within the model. Uh, so making sure that our pressure zones are actually connected properly is, a, is another path. So we're going to first start off talking about criticality here. And to actually have criticality work, we need to identify what the valves are and what these uh, things are that are going to close off the pipe. Um, criticality is, is actually going to identify those critical elements. And it's going to do this not simply by deleting pipes, but by operating valves. Kind of like Fireflow was turning on hydrants. In this case, it will close valves for us. And if you remember this example uh, in the situation, um, we look at the rea reliability, two parallel routes to the system. And if we had a single break at this, at this line uh, 16, uh, you know, we think things won't happen, but then they do, and the system looked like it might be have enough valves, but then it turns out it just really didn't. And there were uh, there was uh, one little portion where there could have been one more valve here. We could have had a valve here, and it would have been okay, but we didn't, and the system is not going to work for us. And you know maybe a subdivision was connected on here, and subdivision was fine. It had a valve on either end. Everything looks fine, but again, because one valve was missing over here, we lost entire subdivision and this main line, and being up a supply flow. So uh, you know it may at first look like everything's okay, but uh, you know uh, across an entire system, spotting all these might be very difficult. That's what criticality is going to do for you automatically. First, let's go through some definitions here. Uh, a segment is the smallest isolatable set of elements. In the past, it's been um, pretty difficult to get a feel for the overall hydraulic reliability of a distribution system and identify the weak links. But we've addressed many of these issues in the criticality feature. So a segment is going to help, uh, criticality is going to help identify a segment. And then segmentation is the process of identifying the segments in a system. We have an automated process for this for you. And once we've identified the segments, we can automatically determine which are the most critical in your system. To help with this, we've, uh, we've identified a new type of element called an isolating valve, uh, which is uh, it's not a hydraulic node uh, like your junctions or tanks, but it can be used to create segments. Uh, think of them as the gate valve on your system or something, or the actual uh, ball valve or, or whatever type of valve you have up there. So let's think about an intersection. And we have four pipes joining at the intersection. How many valves would we need? The really conservative answer would be four. Uh, the not, uh, a little bit less conservative would be n minus one, number of connections minus one, uh, to save a little bit and then hope to valve it down the street somewhere. The whole point of the valves are to minimize the impact of an outage. If there is a water line break, you want to be able to close the valves and prevent the rest of the system from depleting water or losing pressure and flow. So you actually want to be able to isolate them. A lot of times, the number of valves are done by rule of thumb. In every 1,000 foot, every so many linear uh, units of pipe, you put a valve. Or every intersection, you put a valve. So generally, there's rules of thumb that are applied across the system to install the valves. So again, the N method here, the cross, you have four pipes joining. Valve everything. A T, valve everything. Uh, the N minus 1 method saves some capital. It's, you're not spending as much money, but your trade off there is it might be less reliable because you have a larger segment that could potentially be out. Most systems uh, that I've interacted with, most systems seem to follow the N minus 1 rule because that's actually uh, what they're able to follow through with. So to assess the reliability, we need to include the isolating valves in the model. However, most hydraulic models don't include isolating valves, and we generally, generally don't want them to be in the hydraulic calculations. And we don't want to split up the pipe model with every valve, and that could cause um, you know, additional pipes in your network that you may not need. 
we, so we need a different kind of element. These could be a control valve, uh, it could be a butterfly valve, but it's some valve that's going to close off water from moving through the system. And the goal is that these valves don't affect the model size. They are actually treated as a reference to a pipe and can be imported from GIS or a shapefile or wherever you, wherever you need to pull them from. To do that, you would use Model Builder to bring them in. And then they would be in your model, and you can run criticality, and within 20 minutes or so, have some really, really great results for your model to measure criticality. So let's think about the data where your valves come from. Let's say you brought it into Model Builder, and you've got uh, the case at the top here, where you have an isolating valve uh, that's close, but not on the line. What should you do? Should you move the valve to the line, or move the line to the valve? Let's say, let's say for argument's sake, these valves have been uh, surveyed in, so your your confidence is high on the valves. Now go through the thought process of once you move the line to the valve, if you're moving it, now you would need to be considering moving it in the GIS model as well. So there's a kind of a decision that now the lines may not be in the same place as they once were if you're moving them. But the nice thing is about how criticality valves work is you can choose to not move the pipe and to keep the valve where it is and actually just reference the valve. This will help accommodate some of that difference where just basically the lines don't line up exactly where the valves are, even though you know they kind of should, but that's a whole lot of changing to move lines around and ad adding bins artificially. And if you just don't want to spend the time to do that, when you bring in the isolation valves, they will automatically reference to the pipes that are nearby. And there may need to be some checking. Uh, here's what it takes to do the complete criticality analysis. You need your network, bring in model, uh, use Model Builder to bring that in. You need to add your isolating valves, use Model Builder to bring that in. Identify the distribution segments. That's something that criticality does in just one click. It'll find them for you. Identify the outage segments. The outage segments are the areas that are out because the segment is isolated, meaning you can't deliver flow somewhere or it's reduced flow because a segment is out. And again, that's a criticality tool. It takes a, takes a moment, just a moment to see that. Then you can begin to assess the crit criticality of the segments by looking at connectivity alone. And what I really like about the criticality tool is you don't even need to put in pump curves, tank elevations. You just need to have things graphically in. Have the lines in, have the valves in, uh, don't even need to have the model calibrated if you're just looking at connectivity alone because it's looking at segmenting the area by valves, isolating an area, and seeing if you have a segment that goes out, will it impact the rest of the system or how big will that segment be and do some assessments. Now if you wanted to look at it from the hydraulic standpoint, is there a shortfall in pressure or flow in an area because the segment is out? Now you're going to need to put in the pump curves, and yes, you're going to need uh, tank elevations, and it would be good to have C-factors and a more calibrated model at that time. But that, that's kind of why I like the critical model tool is that you can use it so early on in the maturity level of your model and actually get something useful out of it. Okay, so a distribution segment is the smallest portion that can be isolated by valves. It may be part of a pipe. It could be several junctions. So here is an example of segment. In the screen below, uh, the red X's or the black X's on a red dot, those are isolation valves. The light blue is a junction. So can you look at the screen and tell me how many segments we have? I'll just I'll do some cheating here. Segment one, segment two, and segment three. Or we could have just looked at S101, S102, S103. Okay, partially, partially a trick. But, but the whole point is, is I wanted you to start um, visually looking at things and understand that it does take some time because you have to logically look through and say, okay, well, these valves are here, these valves are here, that's going to be segment, that's going to be segment, and it's going to take you some time. That's why the, this segmentation tool in criticality is really valuable because it makes this process happen so quickly. Here's what it actually does. It takes the hydraulic model, your valves that are overlaid or reference to your pipes. It then... Um, well, you'll overlay them, so you'll end up with a model that looks like this. What it does then next is a segmentation, so it creates its new line structure based on uh, being bounded by valves. And it will color code, it will look something like this. And then from that point forward, it takes each segment 
and treats a valve as really a link. Because it, behind the scenes in modeling, a valve is nothing more than uh, a line with two end nodes. Uh, when you graphically draw it, it's a node. But really behind the scenes, under the engine there, energy is passing through uh, the link, just as if it would be passing through a pipeline. It's passing through a link, uh, which is a valve. And in this case, it's really kind of interpreting every valve as a link. And all the segments that are bounded by valves, each unique segment, it's treating that as like a bathtub of information. There's going to be particular uh, information in there, length of pipe, how many nodes, how much demand, how many valves it takes to isolate it. There's information that is held within each segment that you will want to analyze. You might start looking at the number of segments. Each segment has a certain type of valve certain elements that are involved with it or associated with it being pipes. The reason this is important too is you can start looking at and sorting by the longest segments. The longest segments you might uh, might take the approach that that means there's more connections and potentially more customers so we want to make sure to minimize these long segments as much as possible. The more segment length you have or the more valves you have for the segment the more likelihood is that you can't find a valve. And then if you can't find that valve, then you have to go back to another segment. And if that has a lot of valves, you're, you're increasing likelihood that you're going to not find those valves. So that's kind of why having a, a smaller number of valves per segment is beneficial, because it's, you're more likely to find everything. And then large volume segments might be difficult to drain or disinfect if there is a water line break and you ha need to super chlorinate it. You might need to know the volume of that segment to know how much chlorine to put in, or you're just trying to minimize that anyway. And then each segment is going to represent a shortfall, potentially, where because that segment is out, there is a demand that cannot be met because that shortfall is out. This is part of the hydraulic analysis that's running with criticality. Rather than just connectivity alone, now we're having to address, because the segment's out, is one portion of the system being starved with flow and pressure as a result. Here is an example of the criticality color coding. Where you see a transition in color, and this is the same model you're going to be working on here in just a moment. Where you see a transition in color, uh, this is actually where the valves are. So those are each individual segments. And then each individual segment we can look at in a tab table form and compare those segments and whatever properties we need to for them. And when a segment is out of service, there's no water supplied to that segment. However, segment outage may place some downstream segments out of service as well. These kind of outages downstream are pretty rare in loop systems because the system's looped. It's going to be a lot more pervasive in tree systems or branching or trunk lines where you're going further out away from the source with the lack of loops to back things up. And you may think your system's uh, uh, highly reliable, but then you run criticality and you find, wow, there's some things that were just buried in there that we didn't even know existed. So it might be uh, advantageous to run criticality to see that. Here's a fairly simple demonstration that you could perform and communicate to a boss, a manager, a client, or somebody how criticality works and why you need to actually run it on a system. So you would just simply draw a reservoir, draw in the valves, draw in 10 valves, and the pipes and some junctions. So you could, by now you could knock this out within like five minutes. You draw it. Run criticality to see the segments. Again, that's a click of a button. You press compute. You're done because you already have the valves in. And now, uh, let, me, let me take a step back here. Before I show you that, you can look at this and say something like, where in the system, if we lose a pipeline, can we not deliver flow from left to right? or deliver flow to J4 and J3. And going through that thought process, it may take some time. Visually, it'll take some time. So criticality makes those things kind of rise to the surface more quickly to see segments. And then what we're really interested in is looking at the biggest outages. So the biggest outage segment is if we lose uh, this yellow segment right here. You can see it on the screen. If we lose that segment, we cannot deliver flow from left to right. Now, all we really needed was one more valve or two more valves here to allow us to be able to deliver flow from left to right. But it's a very quick demo for you to show you how, or for you to show anyone else, how criticality really works on a simple system. Now, when a segment is taken out of service, you can really have three things uh, that could happen uh, to the nodes in the system. Um, 
you could have demand not be met at all. So in this case, we this is our segment outage right here. Our segment is out, so we can't meet demands out here at all. No demands. Um, maybe now we're blocked from the source. Our source too can't come in. So now we're starving uh, the demands over here. Maybe we're not able to provide as much demand. In the first one here, our source can't come in and our, our uh, demands are not met. That's connectivity alone. But now from the hydraulic standpoint, and the hydraulic analysis is supplying the demands here at the end with only the source one through a six inch and an eight inch, is that going to hydraulically be an issue? That's where we would uh, use the hydraulic analysis with criticality to see if there's a big deal, uh, if it's a big issue or anything for us. So the, the results in criticality depend on how you set up the scenario. You can do a quick and dirty criticality analysis where you, where as long as the node is connected to the source, the demand is assumed to be met. So that's connectivity alone. The better analysis would involve actually running the hydraulic engine. And you can run it in steady state or an extended period simulation and watch the performance of a tank if a tank isn't able to fill because segments are out. You can also select uh, pressure dependent demands and PDDs. And if the pressure drops, the demand met decreases depending on how you set up the pressure dependent demands. This is kind of another level to criticality analysis that can assist you. So if a pressure dependent demand scenario is not selected, then the demand is met if a certain pressure, uh, theoretical default zero, is reached and, or not. So in other words, um, you're, you're, if it hits zero, pre, zero PSI, you're not able to meet that demand at all. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.